In this presentation, I'm talking through the importance of managing service organizational boundaries. This work comes from our paper, Boundary Negotiations, a Paradox Theoretical Approach, published in the International Journal of Operations and Production Management. In our work, we examined a provider of military vehicles who's been developing a custom responsive product upgrade services they're advanced services and what they seek to do is match customer requirements arising through product usage. We studied 60 design changes which were implemented while these military vehicles were in air conflicts and we looked at the managerial decisions that were made. The findings were presented in three parts. Each corresponds to one of three phases of boundary negotiations, boundary ambiguity and boundary defences and redefinition. So if we look at this boundary ambiguity, the first phase. Here, the customer recognized context within, within which products are used evolves over time. Now, the validity of the customer's system is threatened each time context changes as it creates a gap between what the product was designed for and what they're using it for. So the provider's then asked to fill that gap. Now, the customer has asked that they emphasize flexibility over efficiency because they want a viable system. They're tr trying to use these vehicles in war. So what the customer does is they make changes quickly, but in making those changes, often modularity of their product is lost because they might link or tightly couple modules as a result of those changes made. For instance, if you welded a piece onto a module, you, you, you might then not be able to bolt something else that is supposed to fit on it because you've just welded a bracket to it. So the, the requirements for quick changes also meant that the system wasn't optimal for through life cost maintenance. Uh, so focusing on short term goals, emphasizing this flexibility over efficiency is characterized by a strategic defense mechanism named splitting because you, you split, you choose one thing over the other. Now the provider allowed the boundaries of their firm to overlap with the customer to create a holistic system. This is opposed to the, you know, the port system we mentioned before, uh, which is actually has servitization literature often characterizes service. The overlap is tolerated because it enables the system as a whole to be effective. This boundary ambiguity creates situations where the firm or customer can take responsibility because both parties are willing to be pragmatic to ensure that they can deliver what the service requires. So following phase one, the customer had made the efficiency versus flexibility paradox salient. Strategically, they'd focused on flexibility over efficiency in order to support the client. The provider then focused on boundary defenses to support the short term vi viability of their system. So we've moved from a strategic to an operational phase. Now here, the customer required the core platform of one of their vehicles to be modified. This allowed some architectural innovation. Previous product upgrade grades for which a number had been delivered were reintegrated in a modular fashion. Additional changes also allowed the provider to embed future planned flexi flexibility based on some anticipated future needs. Negotiation was key. First, a high service cost reflects the premium price the customer pays for the product upgrade service. That price allows the provider to recoup <clears throat> some of the costs that were associated with accommodating all these emergent requirements. Second, the provider and the customer negotiate how long changes made will stay on the vehicle. Trials are required to ensure that it's safe and viable that the product satisfies the requirement for a certain period of safe operation. In future, changes can be removed if they're no longer required or further engineering trials to ensure that safety cases renewed can be done. So it's very much a process of negotiation. 
Interviewees saw that the existing operations relied upon traditional manufacturing and supply chain processes that were limiting their ability to be both efficient in product upgrade and delivery and flexible in the design of these upgrades. Strategically, they had accepted splitting strategies, but recognised these were suboptimal and new strategies were required to be flexible and efficient. What they decided was that additive manufacture 3D printing and modular design would provide them the capabilities to create bespoke parts rapidly and integrate those into a modular architecture. Together, these operational capabilities could resolve the paradoxes they faced. Our work leads to three propositions. The first is that the firm boundary and the management of both efficiency and flexibility are interdependent. The function of the interface between a provider and customer has implications for the ability to manage efficiency and flexibility. The second proposition is if tensions between efficiency and flexibility become salient and you're faced with a paradox, the provider and customer must negotiate the management of variety at the boundary of their systems. Boundary negotiation for the design of efficient and flexible modular systems contains three distinct phases, the boundary ambiguity, the boundary defence and the boundary alignment. Third proposition the scientific approach to modular design is not suited for the management of both efficiency and flexibility in high variety advanced services.